Okay, here we're given a sequence and we're asked to find a formula for it in reverse. Uh, normally, we're given a formula and then we are asked to plug in the values, um, or at least initially. Now that's the case. So here, this one's a little tricky. It's a little tricky because it requires, you know, certain certain knowledge, certain tricks. I think it's it's difficult to just stumble upon the right answer. You you will stumble upon it, but it, it takes a long time uh, if you're just getting your feet wet and you've never done sequences before, especially if you don't know some of the important things like how to get something to alternate. To get something to alternate from positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, because remember, we're assuming this continues, this pattern continues on, is we have something inside and then we take it to a power. Since the power here goes one, two, three, four, five, it becomes even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, and we have a negative in here. So this flashes, it just blinks on and off into existence, out of existence, into existence, out of existence, and so it becomes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So that's how we solve the, the positive, negative. That's the first thing. The second thing we're going to try to achieve is to actually get the ratio here. So what is it that's happening? It seems we're multiplying by one-fourth. We're multiplying by one-fourth, by one-fourth, by one-fourth, by one-fourth, and we're going to keep going by one-fourth. So it seems that we need to put in one-fourth. in there. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet because if we start this at 1, which we must, what happens? We get negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth isn't our first term. So this is clearly wrong. So there's another move that we have available to us, which is to subtract 1. What does subtracting 1 do, or adding 1? It shifts the beginning. It shifts the beginning to either positive or negative, because this changes this to even, or, uh, yeah, this changes this to even, and if you have something even, it switches the value of this. It makes it go away. It makes the negative go away. So we can either add or subtract. If we add or if we subtract, I like to subtract, then the negative goes away for that one moment, you know, for the, when we plug in 1. So we plug in 1 here, you get 1 minus 1, that's to the power of 0. This becomes a positive 1. And that's what we wanted. But what do we have now? We have a positive 1 fourth. And what we want is a positive 4, not a positive 1 4. So we solved the alignment of positive and negatives. Now we need to solve the fact that we start with 4. So this one's probably the trickiest move of them all. And it's taking it to the power of n minus 2. We take it to the power of n minus 2 because now if we plug in 1, for n, we get negative 1. And remember, having something to the power of negative 1 brings it to the numerator. And if it was in a numerator, that would bring it to the denominator. So you just have to have that intuition that we're starting with 1. And how do you move something up by t having it go to the exponent of negative 1? So if we start with 1, then we would necessarily subtract by 2. So yeah, that's, that's our final answer. Now you could plug in the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you will see that you will exactly get those up there.